we can also use theoretical probability and experimental probability to make predictions on an event. Take this first example. The table below shows the results of tossing a coin a hundred times. Notice the result of it being heads occurred 58 times. That was the frequency of that event. The result of tossing a tails occurred 42 times. That was the frequency of that event. Let's talk about part A here. Theoretically, how many heads would you expect to occur in 300 tosses? Remember that theoretical means what should happen. In theory, when I go to toss this coin, I should have a one out of two chance of tossing a head. Which means no matter how many times I toss this coin, I should always expect that about 50% of the time I should be getting a head. So in this scenario, half of the time I should be tossing a head. So we need to figure out what is one half of 300, which is the number of times that I would toss this coin. When we do a little bit of math here, I would find that I should, in theory, toss a head 150 times. Let's compare this to the experimental value which is what actually did happen. Looking at my experiment, I had a frequency of tossing this coin 58 times as a head. This was my number of favorable outcomes. I tossed it 58 times out of a total of 100. So I would write this probability as 58 over 100. If you're not sure where that 100 came from, it tells you in the directions that we tossed it 100 total times. You could also add up your frequency numbers to see that 58 plus 42 also gave you that total of 100. Now that I know my experimental value for tossing a head, I now have to figure out if I were to do this experiment 300 times, what would I expect to be the result? To find this number, I just have to do a little bit of work here of multiplying my fractions. To make these numbers a little bit easier on myself, I'm going to do some cross-canceling because I can see that I can divide both of these numbers by 100 because 100 divided by 100 gives me 1 and 300 divided by 100 gives me 3. Now I can just go ahead and multiply these fractions straight across to get my answer. 58 times 3 gives me 174, and then 1 times 1 just gives me 1. So based on this experiment, I would expect to toss ahead about 174 times. Notice again here how my experimental and theoretical probability are different from each other. Let's do one more example comparing theoretical versus experimental probability. In this table below, it shows the results of randomly selecting a letter from the word rhombus 80 times. Notice in this experiment, I would randomly select the letter R 15 times, the letter H 10 times, the letter O 6 times, the letter M 11 times, the letter B, eight times, the letter U, 18 times, and the letter S, 12 times. Now that we have this set up for the problem, let's talk about this theoretical question. If a letter is randomly selected 500 times, how many vowels would you expect? Remember, a vowel is picking A, E, I, O, or U. Looking at my word rhombus, I can see if I were to select a vowel, it would be letter O or letter U, which means there are two possible outcomes for this scenario out of the total of seven. So this would be a two out of seven chance of theoretically selecting a vowel. 
So let's use this probability to make a prediction of what would happen if I did this 500 times. In this scenario, I don't have any numbers that I can cross cancel. So I'll just go ahead and multiply straight across. 2 times 500 is going to give me 1,000. 7 times 1 is going to give me 7. If I simplify this fraction, this gives me something like 142.86. Which, since I'm talking about the number of times that I would randomly select this vowel, I'm going to round this to its nearest whole number. So I would say that I would expect this to happen about 143 times out of the total of 500. Let's compare this to the experimental. Notice in the experiment, I picked the letter O six times and I picked the letter U 18 times. If I add these together, I had favorable outcomes of 24 out of the total of 80 times. Again, I get 80 from either this direction here or by adding up my total frequency to see that this would have been 80 total times I picked. With my experimental data, let's find out what would happen if I were to pick this 500 times. I see some cross canceling here. I'm going to go ahead and cross cancel my 80 and my 500 because I see that I can divide both of those numbers by 20, which 80 divided by 20 would give me 4, and 500 divided by 20 would give me 25. Now that my numbers are a little bit easier, I'll go ahead and multiply straight across. 24 times 25 would give me 600 over 4 times 1, which would give me 4. And if I simplify this, I would get an answer of 150 times. Notice in this scenario, my experimental value was actually higher than my theoretical value.